Good evening, everyone. We're continuing our series, Orchot Tzadikim, The Way of the Righteous. This is the last year before Pesach. The next time we'll be back is the uh, Monday after Pesach. Please remember this. So we'll try to do as much as we can, at least to finish the introduction, which we did half of it last week. Last week, the lecture was two hours and 20 minutes. I didn't even realize. Two hours and 15 minutes. And uh, we, we arrive to Shlomo HaMelech that's speaking about Chochma Musar Evilim Bazu. Chochma, it's wisdom, and Musar, it's ethics. Chochma and Musar of the Torah is different than Chochma Musar of the world. The Chochma Musar of the world, it's everyone make up whatever they like. Right? In law school, they have chokhma or musar by them. They made it up. In medicine, medical school, they have their own chokhma or musar. In politics, they have their own chokhma or musar. In every category, they make up the rules. What's wise by them, it's stupid according to the Torah. And what's stupid by them, it's very wise according to the Torah. Not always. Sometimes they comply with each other. Right? For instance, the Torah says you should not kill. They also agree you should not kill. Now, but I'll give you one example. The Torah says you're not allowed to have mercy on murderers. You have to execute them. Don't feed them. Don't put them in jail. Don't let them watch television. Their wisdom is put them in jail, let them get a college degree, prepare them that in 20 years they're going to go back to society. Hopefully they won't kill again. And how much they're going to cost us? Each one of these murderers will cost us a million dollars, minimum, to feed him 20 years, to get him the degrees, to get him heat, and doctors, and everything he needs. He's going to kill us, and we're going to pay a million dollars to put him in a nice cell to watch television. Right? That's against the wisdom of the Torah. The Torah say, you're not allowed to rebel against the law of nature. Rebelling against the law of nature, it's rebelling against God directly. Just like taking God, God forbid, if you can imagine it, and spit at him. Most of these uh, modern liberals, if you tell them, I want you to spit on a Sefer Torah, not on God, on a Sefer Torah, they'll say, listen, I'm not religious, but I'm, not, I'm not so bad. I won't do that. Right? Most of them. Some will do it. I'm not surprised. But most won't do it. But to get to a higher level, if there was a way to speed at God, God forbid, if it was something physical, I believe that no one would dare to do it. At least almost no one. So supporting gay parades, for instance, it's the same thing. No difference whatsoever. Supporting it, it's speeding in Hashem, or at least on his Torah. Supporting every criminal, Mechalele Shabbat, thieves, people that speak Lashon Hara all day in the internet, any kind of support you give them, or melamed alem schut, you try to defend them, try to be their lawyer, try to defend them, like they're not so bad, automatically you open a war between you and Hashem. Yesterday in Canada, I, had, I gave a, a lecture in the morning. This lecture is not... For 95% of the public, this lecture is not for them. It's maybe for 5% of the public. 95% not allowed to click on. It's not for them. It's very, very strong. One of the strongest lectures I gave. And I wrote in a title, not for beginners and not for fakers. People that are fakers, they don't want to watch that lecture. We're going to make them very angry. One of the things I said in a lecture, I can share with you now, is that one of the people that organized my trip there, she told me that they donate to some kind of organization that once a year take them to Israel, and they invite speakers, and they, they do act of charity. So, she, so they said, we almost didn't go this year. So I said, why? She said, because they invited the head of the gays over here to be the, the speaker, the gala, the, the, the main person in the event. And it's a shame for us. 
How can we support this, a, an organization that this is their hero? They invite him to speak. It's one thing, you don't want to condemn him, you feel bad for him, the way he lives. He, every second of his life is a sin. He's rebelling a war against Hashem with his behaving, against the law of nature. It's one thing, you don't want to make a fight with him. Okay. But to come and give him the stage to make him the guest speaker of the event? When religious people are sponsoring you? Such a disgrace and chutzpah. And even if it's your personal opinion, why don't you care about your donors? The people that donate money to you, at least, at least have a little courtesy for them that inviting someone like that is a, is a spit in their face. Of course, they don't care. They do whatever they like. So I told her, it's not a, it's not a mitzvah to help them. You made a sin. Every penny you give them, it's a sin. Participating in their event, it's another sin. Bringing other people to help them, it's another sin. And, you're gonna, and for sins, you have to pay. No one get away with sins. You pay. You have to pay. Supporting any act of crime against Hashem, that it's written in the Torah, or against the sages, the Chachamim, the rabbis, immediately bring problems to your life. This was the topic. People, religious people, people who keep Shabbat, go to shul, put filin, give tzedakah, learn dafyomi. They wonder why they suffer so much. One of the reasons, of course there's many reasons. Hashem knows your reincarnations, reason, things behind the scene. Hashem knows. And not all the suffering that you call suffering, it's really suffering. Sometimes you make a big deal out of it. But assuming you are really suffering and you know that you keep mitzvot, you're religious, believe in God, you wonder to yourself, why I deserve to suffer so many years, right? So I'll give you a tip. One of the reasons is because you make things that make Hashem angry. Usually not in your actions, like in your ideology. Your ideology is not perfect or it's totally rotten. For instance, a real religious, righteous Jew has to vomit or to faint when he see all these people in their parades, how they dress and how they behave. If he see it and he doesn't want to vomit and he doesn't want to faint from being so disgusted from there are people like this that they're with no shame, they come and show their mental disease to the whole world and they're proud of it declaring a direct war against the creation of creator of the world. And remember, I once already said it, and I repeat it again. I'm not even talking from a religion point of view. Even if there was no religion, even if there was no Torah, even if there was no Judaism, every normal human being understands someone made this world. Somebody made this world. There's a creator. He made this world. And he made laws. Oxygen, water, fire, earth, metal, things that happen. He made laws. And one of the laws he made in nature, he made two million species. And the human being is one of them. Monkeys, dogs, pigs, horses. Two million different species. And in all the species, you have male and female. And they're all connected in a perfect way. It's a system. Two things connect together. One was made for the other. One is incomplete without the other. Plus, the only way to continue the race is with male and female. What does it show you about the will of the Creator? He wants male and female, and that's a guarantee to maintain my creation. If the male will decide to be with male and the female with female, what will happen to his creation? will go to the garbage. It will be destroyed. It's a threat to his creation. So if I know, for, again, forget religion. It's not even a religion issue. It's a common sense of human being, even if you're a non-Jew. Common sense you have, supposed to have. Somebody made the world, yes. Someone made me, yes. Someone had a purpose in this creation, yes. And the way he designed the world, this is the way it's supposed to be. In any other way, it's against his will. I don't want to be a criminal against this creator. And again, this is before you even read it in the Torah that it's a death penalty. I'm not even talking about it. 
My speech right now is even to those who are atheists. They don't believe that the Torah is from God. But to everybody understand that somebody made that world. I mean, the world is, is very, very sophisticated. Brain, eyes, oxygen, people, rain. Come on, cannot deny it. It's a very brilliant creation. That creator, he already told us in his creation what he wants, right? If they make a special car, the engine is 10 times bigger than average cars. You don't know who the manufacturer is. What do you know right away? That's a race car. Because for the road here, driving 55 an hour, you don't need a car like this. Somebody made it for race, for racing. Why? Because it flies 200 miles an hour. This is car. So right away, you know, this is a race car. How do I know? No one told me. I look at the creation and I know what the purpose of it is. I see an airplane. I know it's not a car. It's too wide. It goes in the air. It's not for the road. Anyone told you I need someone to tell me that airplane is for the sky? Of course I know. So the idea is, Rabotai, many of the issues that become a religion issue, it's not even a religion issue. It's human being. Are you a normal human being or you're mentally sick? That's what it comes down to. Before we even talk about religion, and you see, you see right away that every person that believes in God supposed to be allergic to all kinds of behaviors who are against the law of nature. And if you're not, something is very, very fishy. Don't be surprised why things do not work for you. And you know what? In case you're still not convinced, do you know the, the, the Gemara say, don't ever come to a person and praise his enemy in front of him. It's a warning. You have a friend, Ruven. You and him are good buddies. He has an enemy, Shimon. You know that he cannot even hear his name. Make sure not to bring his name in a conversation in front of Ruven. Why? What will happen right away? Lashonara. You're going to make him commit a crime against the Torah. It's guaranteed. As soon as you mention Shimon, he is going to get furious. Why are you mentioning this Rasha? Why are you bringing him into my house? I don't want to hear his name. Immediately he will hate you. He will hate you right away. He will be very angry at you. If not hate you, he will be very upset with you. Why is he upset with you? If you praise or understand my enemy, you show empathy to him, what happened? Your relationship with me getting ruined. That's the nature of the world. If you don't talk about him anything, you can support him, but not in front of me. You do it in front of me, and then you expect me to like you? Same thing Hashem said to us. You like these criminals, and you expect me to like you? You have no problem that I am a Shabbat, when you know I am so upset in the way they behave, and you expect me to give you good things? You supporting them, you go against me. You supporting me, you go against them. Now, I'm not telling you to go and hit them, or to abuse them, or to curse them, or to insult them, but at least make an effort to save them. And definitely, definitely don't kiss up to them. And don't tell them that they're great. How great you are. No, 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 that's very dangerous. Kissing up and praising wicked people, you're playing with your life. Why? The Gemara says, four groups do not accept Pnei Four groups cannot ever be in the presence of God, ever. Who are they? One of them is Kat Hanfanim. Kat Hanfanim, kissing up to wicked people. You want to kiss up? Find a big Talmud Chacham, kiss up to him. That's mitzvah. Rabbi, can I drive you? Rabbi, can I carry your books? Rabbi, can I help you? Rabbi, where are you going to be? You need tea? You need something? You okay? You want me to hang your jacket? Mitzvah to kiss up. Talmid Chacham. Not necessarily Rabbi. He can be 20 years old. Student in yeshiva, but he's a Talmid Chacham. He learns all day Torah. Mitzvah to kiss up to him. Why? You don't kiss up to him because he's his beautiful eyes. You only kiss up to him because you appreciate the Torah that he knows. Meaning you appreciate Hashem. The Torah of Hashem, that's what motivates you to kiss up to him. If you admire a lawyer that all day lie in court to release rapists and murderers back to the street, you're, you're praising him. 
What does it show? That his wisdom is great in your eyes. It doesn't matter he lies, he cheats, he forged things. It doesn't bother you. You're not allergic to it. Why? Because you are not a lover of Hashem. If you're a lover of Hashem, everything people do against him should make you allergic. David HaMelech concluded it in one sentence. Mesanecha Hashem Esna. All your enemies, Hashem, those who do not like you, I do not like them. I cannot like someone who hates you. I cannot like someone that is Mechalel Shabbat and breaking the covenant with you and spit in your face every week. I cannot like him. I may be nice to him. I may wish him well. I hope he's going to become Baal Tshuva. I don't wish him any bad. Of course, fine. We're not cruel. We don't want people, uh, we don't want to see people get destroyed. Believe me, when they think and when they get punished and when they die, it's very painful. What? You don't want to see that's the end. You'd rather that they do tshuva. But to compliment, to compliment them, to praise them, to learn that they're great, to protect them in public, to the point that I see some fools, that they see the most wicked people in our nation, not only they praise them, sometimes they say words, for me is greater than any rabbi. Why? There's one good thing about him, that he does good. Million things he does bad, he doesn't care. One good thing he does, for me is better than, ever, than Rav Ovadia. What are you comparing this to this? Are you normal? You're comparing a giant, holy, giant, one of the biggest in the last hundred years to someone who does one good thing in his life? It's a disgrace. But this is how religious people behave. Remember, I'm talking about religious people. At least they think they are. We gotta be very careful. Yes, come Adam Asher Taftan Lechapes Derechatov. There are people they want they searching for the right positive way. But they really don't know what's good for me. Sometimes religious people come. Rabbi, hi. I don't know what to do. Should I learn in this yeshiva or should I learn in this yeshiva? This yeshiva will take me for free, but it's far and this. This yeshiva I have to pay, but they, they learn much better than this. He has a dilemma. Good and bad in each side. He doesn't know what's good for him. He's thinking, he's in a dilemma. I, want, I don't want to just go for 80%. I want to go for 100%. I don't want to compromise on the truth. I want to reach 100%. All his life, he lives in confusion. Confusion. Am I on the right path or no? Am I on the right path? Eh? Uh, if, if I remember correctly, it was Rav Chaim Shmuelevitz. He explained the Gemara with Rabbi Yochanan that before he passed, he was 120 years old. His student told him, Rabbi, why are you so nervous? It's the biggest tzaddik in the land. And he learned Torah all his life. He said, I'm going in front of a king that you cannot bribe. Even if I would go to a king that you can bribe, I would be very nervous if I go to a trial. Now when I go in front of Hashem and cannot bribe him, how can I not be scared? So they told him, Rabbi, give us a blessing. Before you leave us, give us a blessing. So he said to them, I bless you that you fear God at least like you fear people. That's the blessing. If you fear him like you fear the police on the highway, or that you fear the FBI, or the IRS, or... or or a murderer in the neighborhood, or the mafia. If you fear him like you fear people, you'll be good. You're not going to do stupid things. Rav Chaim Shmuelevich, he asked, what, is, what, what was he afraid about? He learned all his life Torah. What can go wrong? You do the highest mitzvah all your life. You gave your life for the Torah. What can go wrong? He was afraid that maybe his way in the learning and the direction he went to, maybe it was incorrect. I can be all my life in the Torah. How do I know I went exactly like Hashem wanted me to go? Maybe Hashem didn't want me to learn this way, wanted me to learn this way. Even when you learn in Yeshiva Gemara, there are two ways to learn Gemara. There's Gemara Biyun and Gemara Pkiyus. Pkiyut means 
that you learn faster, you cover the subject, and you understand that generally. You don't go very deep. If you go very deep, it will take 10 times longer. So you, you understand it generally. Meaning, if somebody talks to you about this Gemara, you know who against who. You know the topic, you know the general rules, that's it. You don't know to the smallest detail, Rashi, Tosfot, what exactly is all the machlokot, what did Tosfot say like this here, and over there he says something different a little bit. Why Rashi used this word, and in another Masechet he used a different word. This is not ordinary people that sometimes they speak like this, sometimes like that. These people were more precise than computers. So if your computer always shows you something, and on one day show a red screen, always blue, and today red. So you know by the computer has to be a reason, there's no mistakes. And then you begin to see, and you see on the side warning. You're off balance, you're in a negative balance. Something changed the color, there's a reason. So if Rashi always use one word, and all of a sudden he will use a different word, it has to be a day investigation. Searching, opening books, pages, until you realize why. Why? Because nothing is coincidence by them. It was all precise to the, to the point. So this is, that's called limud be'iyun. Someone who learns like this be'iyun, how many pages you think he can do? Not even a page a day. All day on a page. Someone who learns kiyud can do eight pages a day. Much, much faster. So he's going to finish the Shas in seven years and he's going to finish it in 50 years. Big difference. Some rabbis say, Pkiyut is not even considered learning in their level. There's no such thing, Pkiyut, waste of time. Only limud be'iyun. You want to learn the Torah of Hashem all the way to the bottom of it. You don't learn like they say in Israel, Hafif, on, on the surface. You must go to the root, to the deepest arguments to understand everything and repeat it at least four times. So now if you learn one way, you begin to think, maybe Hashem wanted me to learn the other way. Why? Maybe Hashem didn't want me to learn so deep that after uh, 20 years I barely finished three masachtot. Maybe if I finish Pkiyut first time, I would finish the whole Gemara. Then I'll do it again, the whole Gemara. And then on a the third time, I'm going to start digging more. Maybe that's the right way. Maybe not. There's no such thing. It's better to learn a little bit, but to know everything with all the details. You don't have to finish the whole Torah. As long as I learn and I put all my life into it, and I learn in the hardest, in the highest level, how much I achieve, it's not relevant. You don't get reward based on achievement. All the reward in the Shamaim is based on the effort and the intention. The achievement is not so important. So if two people learn, one finish two masachtot and one finish four, and they learn the same difficulty and the same hours, they get the same reward. That's it. But I finish four and he finish two. doesn't matter. I gave him a, be- a brain and I gave you a better brain. So the X amount of hours you put, you achieve more. Or your memory is better. But that's it. But he didn't do anything less than you. He gave his life for the Torah and you did. So... Rabbi Yochanan that learned Torah all his life was worried. Maybe I wasn't learning exactly like Hashem wanted me to. To this level he was crying before he died. So they don't, they never achieve what's the truth. And there's two reasons for it. The first, he does not know himself. What's the connection? Why will a person be religious but confuse all his life? All his life he is in a dilemma, where to go, what to do, what to learn, what kind of job, what kind of shiduch. Always in confusion. Why? First one, he does not understand who he is. He doesn't know himself. He never introduced himself to himself. He never learned about his ego and his anger to the root of the problem, like I say, in the series of the psychology of the mind, which, by the way, I bought you CDs already, 14 lectures that we made here in English, the psychology of the mind and the soul. They're all on a CD. Tonight, I hope to finish the Hebrew one, and there will be 16 lectures, the Hebrew. The English, because it's longer lectures, 14 lectures. It's all in a CD already. So a person does not know his weaknesses. 
and he doesn't understand his bad traits. Some people, they understand that they have ego, but they don't know how severe it is. It's normal. My, everyone, if you offend him, is going to get upset. That's how we think. I'm only getting upset when someone upsets me. I'm not just upset for nothing. So I have the right to be upset, and I have the right to take it to my heart. Beloni. You know, you're not allowed to be angry when someone gets you angry. Not, needless to say, when nobody gets you angry. One person once told me, Rabbi, I'm not angry. I only get angry when people make me angry. So of course, if not, you would be a mental case. Walk on the street, happy, all of a sudden, begin to scream. What happened? I got angry. What, from the air? The bird on the tree got you angry? That's, not, that's a crazy person. Of course, everyone gets angry when someone makes them angry. Huh? No. It's always somebody that triggers the anger. That's the whole point. It's not allowed to trigger the anger. You have to guard the switch of the anger that no one, no one will turn it on. No one and nothing. Nothing else. So he doesn't know himself. And no mafchin bedrachav megunim. והוא דומה לרובן שמחפש את שמעון ואינו מכירו. What is it like? Reuven say, I'm looking for Shimon. He goes like this in yeshiva, thousand people. I'm looking for Shimon. Which Shimon? Shimon Leibovich. Do you know how he look? No, I never saw how he look. So why do you going like this? What? How do you know what to look? You know, sometimes people pick me up in the airport. So they come to the airport. They do not understand that they know me, but I don't know them. So they think, because they know me, they think I'm already friends with them for years. <laughs> Listen, for years. They feel like their brother is showing up. But I don't know who to look for. So I always ask, can you tell me what car, who, if you can send me a picture, and I know to, who to look for. You understand? The worst thing is when you walk, go outside and you don't know who to look for. So every person that walks near you, you think, oh, probably it's him. He passed by. It's probably him. He passed by. You understand? So how are you going to find someone when you don't know how he looks? You can pass all day next to you and you don't know it's him. Even though his nature, he wants to be good. He wants to be a tzaddik. Some people do not want to be good. They don't want to be honest. They don't want to be Shomer Shabbat. They don't want to eat kosher. They don't want to pray. They don't want to learn Torah. They don't want to dress like a tzaddik. They don't want. But some people, they want very much. And they also cannot do it. What's the difference? First one, he doesn't want. Nothing will help. If you don't want, nothing will help. The second one wants very much, but he doesn't know how. That's very bad, very bad problem. Kevan sheno makir chesrono, v'yesh adam shu yodea amidot haraot sheyesh bo. Some people know what's bad about them. Rabbi, believe me, I know myself very well. I know I'm angry, I know I'm stingy, I know I'm lazy, I know I'm not honest, I know I'm angry, I know I'm jealous, I know, I know, I know everything. Nothing is new. You're not going to tell me anything I don't know. No. So? Vechoshev latzet mehem. And he wants to improve his midot. He wants to get out of the negative. Velechoz ba midot ha-tovot. He wants to grab to the good traits. Vegan yim lo yasi kol yamav derech hayashar. Even though all his life he didn't get on the right path. Michamad shemit atzel. Lechapes ha midot ha-tovot karawi. Almost. At least 70, 80% of the people I met in my life, they want to be righteous. I'm talking those who became, started to become religious. They want to be righteous. They don't want to just be an ordinary religious person. They really want to be perfect. The problem is that even if they come to ethic Musar lectures like this and many others, 10 years later, they're still more or less the same. Very small improvement. You ask them, you come to so many lectures, you listen to all the CDs. Sometimes people come to me, Rabbi, I listen to all your CDs. I say, all? I say, yes, at least 50 of them. 
So you know, 50, 30 hours each one. It's 1,500 hours. So believe me, even more than that. So I said, what went wrong? Still jeans, holes, no kippah, no tzitzit. What went wrong? How can it be? You yeah, listen to 50 different CDs and still chiloni? If I would be here, I would make sure that you don't even see me face to face from the embarrassment. I love the lecture. They think it's a Broadway over here. I'm looking for fans to buy tickets and, you know, to clap. What's the whole goal of these lectures? Better you listen to one hour and be religious than a million hours and stay chiloni. No? I'm looking for fans. How many hours are you going to listen? It's important. The more hours you learn, the more Torah you learn. But what is the main goal? To, me, to make you Shomer Shabbat. To make you Shomer Mitzvot. Laziness is one of the biggest enemies. He doesn't wake up in the morning, so he doesn't come to pray in Minyan. So therefore, he doesn't say Kaddish, he doesn't say Kedusha, no Birkat Kohanim, no Barechu, no Amen, doesn't hear Kaddishim, nothing. So it's very bad. In the holiday, Sefer Torah, Monday and Thursday, he missed a lot. Plus, when you come to the synagogue, you learn what you do wrong. If you pray at home, you can pray all your life and put it filling in the wrong place. There's not one person to fix you, to correct you. All your life, you did not put filling even once. Why? When you're around people, you see what you do wrong. Everyone rises and you're still sitting. Oh, I've been praying at home for years. I didn't know I have to stand over here. I didn't know over here you have to sit. I didn't know over here you have to go three steps back and to do like this and to do like this. I didn't know all these things. So you learn. Plus, not only that you learn, the minyan, tefillah minyan, it goes as one unit, combined. You go together with the better people in a shul. Even though your tefillah is not worthy, if it would be alone, Hashem wouldn't accept it today. But because you attach yourself to good people, it automatically goes express. It's very important to pray in minyan. Why? Hashem takes, it's like I always give this example. When you go to Canada with a bus, when a bus comes to the border, if you come with a car, they open your trunk, they check the bags, they check everything. Five minutes checking. They check everything. Many questions they ask. Sometimes they say pull over, go over there. They mamash do a real serious check. But if you come with a bus of 100 people, are well, they going to start checking each person? Each suitcase is going to take five hours. It's a line. They don't check anything. Just passport. Tak, 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 tak. Unless there's no problem, anything in the border, in a, in a record, find a way, they go. So you go with everyone in one shot. If you come on your own, most likely they wouldn't let you enter. But when you come with a group, you're going. Why? That's how she, that's how she made it. You pray with the public, your tefillah goes. You pray alone, you have to be worthy. And most people are not worthy at all. They steal, they lie, their hands is full of blood. Their mouth is filthy from Lashon Ara and murdering people in the internet all day and all night. Their body is impure from all the sins they made with the girls. There's a lot of obstacles. Even in a moment that your heart is broken and you really want to speak to Hashem, you're not worthy. You make so many crimes that the Satan immediately objects. Don't listen to him, he's not worthy. Don't let him talk, Bichlal. How does someone like this dare to pray, Bichlal? That's how the Satan is. Criminal like this, he's praying now and in one hour he's going to make the biggest sin. Or he just came from the worst sin and he's coming pretending he's a tzaddik. But in a minyan, you get saved. It's really, really stupid not to go to minyan. It's really, really stupid. Why? Because you can pray 80 years. Without minyan, you won't reach what you reach one month with minyan. People should know it. Chaval. Mamash chaval. Not talking that you're a special doctor, that you have night shift, you come home at 5 a.m., you're already collapsing. Okay, no. People like this, they may be anus. Ordinary people. Go to bed 11, 12 at night. Why can't you wake up 6, 6.30? Why? And come to the synagogue and pray for an hour and then learn a little bit after that. Fantastic way to start the day. We move on. So laziness. Laziness 
it's also a very big problem. So what is it like? Reuven that looking for Shimon, but he does know how Shimon looks. So why he doesn't find him? He did not search for real. He searched two seconds. He went like this, like this, and didn't find But he was all the way there in the corner. If he really, really searched, he would find. Because he's lazy, you know how the kids are. Can you go check if there's garbage in the grass? Pesach is coming. Make sure all the bags, bamba, be sleep, red says, here, take a garbage can, pick up everything. If you see cigarettes that the dear guests throw on Motzei Shabbat in the grass when they come, somebody, the children will clean my dirt. No problem. They throw the cigarettes on the grass. Somebody has to clean it. So you send your son. 30 seconds later, he's back in the kitchen. No? You checked? Yeah. You did a good job? Of course. You sure? Let's do it together. Hey, wait a minute. Over there, I didn't check. Before you even go out. Ma, you wanted me over there also? Ma, over here? I thought you only say over here. Well, man, next time, you just check in the kitchen, and that's it. Right? This is how it is. Kids, if you don't teach them, how are they going to learn? Laziness. Vazenemar. Kesef nivchar leshon tzadik. Kesef nivchar leshon tzadik. Mi shenoshe b'chavero va leshalem lo kesef b'mishkal, im eno makir b'amitat ha-mishkal v'tzedek ha-moznaim o makir ha-kolach sheno b'ki b'bchinat ha-kesef, v'ze ha-ish ha-karov liot nizak b'inyan mishkal v'chesef, ki l'famim yemaen b'chesef v'yikah ha-sigim. It's like a person that wants to come and pay, but he doesn't uh, know the coins, the value of the coins, and doesn't know the weight, the weight on the scale. So when you do business, you need to know the weight. How much is a kilo? How much is half a kilo? How much is a pound? How much is an ounce? You don't know. And you don't know the currency. How are you going to conduct business fairly? You're not a thief. You, your nature, you're not a thief. But every customer is going to cheat. Why? You don't know. It's going to be a problem. Or if you don't check carefully, or you don't count at least twice. Right? There are people that are not stable. They are full of contradictions. Full of contradictions. One hour you like this, one hour you like this. Two minutes you like this, three minutes you like that. One of the most important things in life is stability. I always tell people, when you find a shiduch, one of the most important things to find if the guy you're about to marry is a stable guy. Not a guy of a mood. One day is a tzaddik, the next day is all day in bed. One day you wake up in net, 6 a.m., the next day 11 a.m. One day, two, three days he learn, then a week he does nothing. One day, all day, tikkun abrit, fasting, the next day, all day with Christine. You want to marry someone like that? It's not stable. One day is here, one day is that. It's like a psychological manic depression. Psychological. One day tzaddik, one day rasha. One minute Yaakov, one minute Esav. Hayadayim yedei Esav, ve'akol kol Yaakov. Ba'im, the hands and the mouth switch sometimes. Sometimes the hands is Yaakov and the mouth is Esav. Sometimes the other way around. Very dangerous. So how do you know when they give you the references you ask the references about the guy. How is he good? Is he religious? Yes. Is Shomer Shabbat? Of course. He's learning Torah? Sure. He graduated this great yeshiva. Is he uh, davening in Minyan? Come on, are you kidding? Of course. Is he dressed like a religious guy? Yes, all the time. Black hat, black jacket, white shirts. Fan fantastic guy. Tell me, how many hours did they learn? Uh, the truth, I don't know. So how do you know he learns? It was in great yeshiva. Oh, yeah, six months ago. Maybe since then he did not open a book and he became a sav. Six months ago, it was a great learning. Everyone was learning in yeshiva. I was 18. Now he's 18 and a half. He's totally a sav, all day on the iPhone. 
You don't know, I was with him in yeshiva two years ago, I was the biggest tzaddik in yeshiva. Two years ago he was. No, it's not a lie. Today he's the worst person in the neighborhood. All day dirty things on his iPhone. He forgot Bechlan was Gemara. Just because he was good two years ago, that means he's good now. You know how many dangers and how many risks? You know how many people before they got married, they were very good, and as soon as they got married, they went down 80% on their religion level? Why? They got what they wanted already. What is she going to do? Divorce me? I put the show in the Shiva. I want to get a good Shiduch. Put two or three good ears. I behave very well. The, the rabbis give a very good reference on me. I got the greatest girl from Bet Yaakov. Greatest. No. What's the rush? No, there's no rush. Hey, Moishi, what happened? I think we're going down on our level. Ah, don't be fanatic. What is she going to do? It's too late already. יש אדם שמשתנה במנהגים ואינו קבוע. זמן אחד אוחז במנהג זה וזמן אחד מסתלק מאותו מנהג. One day is Breslev. The next day is Chabad. Now a week later you already have a nice long beard. And a month later, shave beard, completely מחלל שבת. I know one like that. It was a, great, a famous singer. One day is like this, next day. One day is in Uman, next day is in 770. A week later is in Harlem. You know him or no? Uh, without saying names. I'm Evin Yavin. This was predictable. When a person is jumpy, he doesn't have a way, doesn't have foundation, every fashion he hears about, he tries. One day see Litvish, they go with the tzitziot all the way down to the floor, some of them. Long, they don't cut, very long. Some of them wear long uh, frocks, so the tzitzit is all the way down. Oh, all of a sudden, he's also walking like that. Who told you it's good like this, it's faladi, it's not our way? No, I like it. Next day is like this, next day is like this, next day is wearing a jalabiya, next day he moves to Tzfat with the sheep and the flute. And a week later, he goes to Bnei Brak, to Ponovich, wants to be a, le a learner. You were a shepherd a week ago, now you all of a sudden became a yeke. He tries a little bit of each. Israeli salad. Go and marry a person like this, not stable. You don't know what tomorrow is going to be. Tell me, Moshe, today you're Moshe. Who are you going to be tomorrow? Itzik. And after that, Asher. And after that, Nisim. And after that, Zalman. Every day, someone else. Yes, I have a few, few students like that. I was able to make them Bali Tshuva, bring them to Yeshiva. They were in one way. They moved to Israel. All of a sudden, this guy is Breslev, this guy is this, this guy is that. They found themselves a group somewhere. And then you see that changed totally. So what do you see? People are not stable. They don't have a, in Hebrew, they have a say. En lo amut shidra. He does not have a stable and strong spine. If your spine is soft, it's like a tree. You're shifting with the wind. Where the wind goes? To there, you also go. The wind goes there, you go there. How do you know if a fish is alive? If you swim against the waves. All the dead fish come with the waves towards the beach. If you see one fish swimming to the opposite side, he has his own opinion. He doesn't go with everyone. It's not in a sheep that follows the, 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 the cattle. So, what's going to be? Someone that is not stable in his religion, in his ideology, he looks like a person that wants to move to a city, but he doesn't know the way there. He doesn't know the way to get there. So what is the reason why people Someone that is a ksil, blind, spiritually, 
full, no direction in life, he puts a lot of effort. Don't get me wrong. Some of these people put more efforts in religion than other people. They try this, they try that, they fast, they go to cults, they do all kinds of strange things. They put a lot of efforts, hours of efforts. But what happened? They get very tired until they collapse. It's an excitement, adrenaline. X amount of time and boom, they collapse. לכן יש לחמול על האנשים הטבועים באבלי השווא. We have to feel bad for the people that live in illusions. ללמדם צדק. We have to teach them the right righteous way. המשקל והיושר והמאזניים. Decency, honesty, straight. ולהודיעם בחינת הכסף. להורות להם דרכים ישרים. To teach them how to do, what to do, when to do. What's the right direction? למען יברו האדם בתחילת הבחנתו מסילה אשר תביאו למקום רענן ודשן אשר שם כל הטוב. And the person will see all the paths and will know to choose the right path. Right path, רבותיי, is ideology. I give you an example. I gave it in the last few weeks a lot, but it's worth to repeat it again. You have two kinds of rabbis. Rabbis that grew up in kosher, strict, orthodox yeshivot, and rabbis that grew up in university. If you're clever, you see right away which one is real diamond and which one is cubic zarconia. It always gonna be, of course, there's always an exception to the rule, and I'm sure some of them are really fine, and I met even few. But it's always going to be that the, the vast majority of the university rabbis will be the Kubik Zarkonia and the one who really learned with Gdolei Torah and good Orthodox strict yeshivot. They're very, very decent with their way, with their ideology. They all think the same. They all have the same direction. Everywhere you go, before you even go, you know what, they, what they're going to tell you. You know right away. When you finally find modern, which usually become rotten and corrupted, and all the opinions that they taught him in college, what they learned in America and England and who knows of the rest of the world and the East, and all kinds of things that they learn in science, who supposedly come to contradict the Torah and Hashem, they learn one leg in Yeshiva and one learn in Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm not even talking about all the scenes that they see in college and experience over there. And I'm not talking about the gay club. And I'm not talking about tens of gay guys that works with the yamaka and get engaged and get married. And they call themselves religious, embarrassing their parents all over the internet. I'm not even talking about this kind of sick people. I'm talking people that are from the outside. They wear black hats and they dress 100% orthodox. But when you begin to talk to them, you see how rotten is their ideology. 20 years they call themselves religious and they only went crooked more and more every year. Unbelievable. That's when you find out when there's an argument between Chachamim, when they begin to express their opinion, you get the shock of your life. You see what a rotten ideology this person has. We, got, we had a, a perfect example uh, two months ago in Boca Raton. And why you graduate, that, you know, call himself a rabbi and a dayan, he gave his life to bring the Christian missionary into the shul. And when the missionary canceled, he literally cried. He cried that the Christian missionary antisemite that wrote that we have to pray for the soul of Hitler in his book, and that the Jews are parasite, and he gives his life to hunt soul to bring them to J.C. Penny. That's his hero. So as soon as you find something like this, do you need to, to check how much Torah he knows? Is it relevant, Bechlal? Let's say he knows the whole Shas by heart. He's going to tell you the whole Gemara by heart, let's say. The whole Chumash by heart. The whole Rambam by heart. The whole Shulchan Aruch by heart. And this is his hero. And Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth, you know Dr. Ruth? That's his second hero. He also brought her to sit next to the Sefer Torah on the stage and to speak to his community. You understand? 
if this is a, his heroes, he can sit an hour and listen to this kind of people. He can, I wouldn't be able to sit in their class five seconds. I would faint, fine, or just being in their presence, these impure people. He sits next to them. Good thing he did not kiss her. I was close to even give her a hug and a kiss. This is his hero. You understand? It cannot be that on one hand you will admire the Rambam, and on the other hand you admire the biggest criminal on earth. It just cannot be. Imagine if someone tells you that he admired the rabbi, but at the same time he admired the Nazi. What would you remember from the conversation? Only one thing. What would you remember? That he admired the Nazi. Finished. It doesn't really matter anymore which rabbi you admire. Who cares? It's not relevant anymore. This is what I'm talking about. Ideology shows you immediately who these people are. No wonder all the graduates from the college ran to one on a ladder to sign. Why? Because they are so into that university mentality, university ideology, which in many, many points in the Torah, they contradict the Torah. Contradict the Rambam, contradict Chazal. And therefore, someone that say what the Torah say 2,000, 3,000 years ago, for them, thank you, for them, thank you that contradict, someone that contradict the Torah and the Gemara, for them is a radical, is an extremist, is an extremist. You understand what I'm saying or no? How can it be an extremist? He reads what the Torah say, he reads in a Rambam, they don't care. They are so brainwashed by the university that that's become their life. If it's a contradiction between Rambam and the university, the university will always win. The university. There's one rabbi in Brooklyn, he's very, very straight in his thinking. He's a student of Rav Avigdor Miller, Zatzal. Rav Avigdor Miller had, over the years, probably hundreds of students. Many of them today are big rabbis. I met many of them over the years. I never found one student or one listener of Rav Avigdor Miller that had a rotten ideology. Never. Every one of his students that I spoke in my life, mostly Ashkenazim, always had the right ideology in every subject. Thank you. It's all go after the head. If this is your Rebbe, this is your teacher, you learn the right way. If your teacher is someone that is brainwashed from the university, Rahmana Letzilan, where are you gonna end? Rahmana Letzilan, where are you gonna end? That's why they're not vomiting when they see gay pered. That's why they're not vomiting when they see people who speak against Chazal. That's why they have another Rasha Slifkin who writes in his books that the world is millions of years old, like all the other Kofrim, and he calls himself a rabbi. And that's why Matzah Orevet Azarzir, he went now to Dweck, the other Rasha in London, together. All the mafia of the Rashaim, all of them connected. It's unbelievable. Then it's Mamash like Korach Ve'adato. I once told the person that every week was getting into trouble. I told him, you must replace all the friends you're hanging out with. He told you, he told me, why? They are my friends. What do you mean I have to replace them? I said to them, look at them. This one is a drug addict. This one is a burglar. This one is this. This one is a bum. So I said to him, did you ask yourself why all these negative people attach to you like a magnet? The flies, you know the flies? You know where they go. The flies, they attach to, you know what, right? Go in the bathroom. You can see an example. The flies, they all come to the place of the dirtiest place on earth. If you attract this kind of people to you, that shows who you are. If you are attracted to this kind of people, it shows who you are. If you are attracted to Bnei Torah, even if you yourself not a Ben Torah, but you see a Talmud Chacham, you don't want to live all day. A few times I took people to big rabbis for bracha, they felt the, the holiness of the yeshiva. They stayed there until the evening. They just didn't want to go home. They felt so great. They sat in one of the tables. 
they got a book, they, they didn't want to go home. It was only five minutes visit. They felt, their neshama felt so alive, they didn't want to go home. Then he started to come once a week on Sundays when he had off and try more until they themselves went to the yeshiva. That's where he still wants to be. And this is Barabotai. It's all here in Akdama of the Orchot Tzadikim on the introduction. We have to feel bad for this kind of people. To teach them justice. To teach them the right path that will bring them to a place, fresh place, great place with all the greatness. And this is a treasure of Irat Shamaim. Irat Shamaim. Fear of Hashem. Fear of the sins. Admiring Hashem. Understanding who we're dealing with. This is all fall into the category of Irat Shamaim. Asher Isof Kol Amasim. That's the ultimate goal. You reach your destination. Asher Hashem Itbarach Shmor Shoel Mikol Adam. That's what Hashem is hoping from every Jew to arrive there. Kedichtiv, it's written in Dvarim, Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Miimach. What is your God wanting from you? Ki im leira. One thing, fear. Fear. Feel the presence of Hashem in every step of your life. That's all I want from you. Ve'en shu ma'asen nikshav bilti aira teora. Everything you do without fear and without thinking very, very deep about what you're about to do, it does not have, it does not count as a good deed. We have to inform every person that wants to bring himself to the good traits and to get irat shamayim and to fix his midot. And to have a strong connection and tie to Hashem. Ki kol ha-Torah tluya betikun ha-midot. All the level of Torah that you're going to reach in your life is all depend on how much you're going to correct your traits. We have a saying in the Gemara, kol she'irato kodemet lechokhmato Chokhmato mitkayemet. Kol shechokhmato kodemet leirato en chokhmato mitkayemet. Translation, you see a person. He has wisdom of Torah. He knows Gemara, he knows Shulchan Aruch, he knows Rambam, he knows Zohar. Very impressive. But he's a rotten modern. Everything by him is barely a mitzvah. Everything. Half, quarter, third. Doesn't take anything serious. Don't be fanatic, you exaggerate, mixture of boys and girls, he's there, food is barely kosher, he's there. No problem. His wife, the wig all the way to the floor. Everything by him is Rachmana Letzilan. But he knows so much. Bring me the Gemara. Everything. Wow, so you get puzzled. Who am I to give him Musar? He knows a hundred times better than me. That's what the ordinary Jew thinking. He opened books, he knows so much, he learned 40 years Torah. Who am I to tell him? No, you're not blind, you're right. You're right, not him. He has wisdom, but his ira is less than his wisdom. His wisdom is nothing. And chokhmato mitkayemet. It's like evaporates eventually. I won't get him anywhere. Or the other way around. Irato kodemet lechokhmato. He not only knows Torah. The fear always comes first. His righteousness is more than, the, than his knowledge. Comes before his knowledge. Kodemet. It's more priority for him. Tikkun amidot. Manners. Cleanness. Behaving. And then knowledge. Not the other way around. Knowledge, 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 and a little bit manners. No. It's Chazal. I'll give you a better example. Chazal say... Chazal says, Talmid Chacham. You know what Talmid Chacham means? In the time of Chazal? Who is the biggest rabbi in the world? Let's say until two years ago it was Rav Yashiv. Multiply Rav Yashiv by a hundred. That's a Talmid Chacham in the eyes of Chazal two thousand years ago. Or Rav Steinman, or Rav Ovadia, or Rav Ozner, or Rav Ben Zion Abba Shaul. Or Rav Moshe Feinstein and many others. 
multiplied by a hundred. That's Talmid Chacham in a level of Chazal. Not even. I'm exaggerating. Maybe multiplied by a thousand. These big rabbis, which is the biggest in the world today, in a time of Chazal, maybe they'll let themselves tea. Maybe. In the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rabbi Akiva. You know the compare? Ask them. They'll tell you. Ask Rav Steinman. Rav Steinman. Do you think in the time of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and Rav Akiva you would be able to be a student? They will read Tehillim for you. Maybe Hashem will cure you. Well, take that Rabbi, why you took Tehillim? I'm praying for you, Neshama. Why? You're asking me such a question? Me and Rabbi Akiva? I is the biggest in the world today? Yes, today. 2,000 years ago, Hashem Yazor, it's a different world, a whole different world. These names in the Gemara, they were Mechayem Etim, all of them can take a dead body from the grave and put back the soul in. It's not regular people. So if Chazal saying, Talmid Chacham, then you know there's not one question you'll ask him and he won't know. There's nothing. There's no such thing. Any question, any halacha, any Gemara, any Zohar, everything he knows by heart. You will never in seven years ask a question and he won't give you an answer. This is Talmid Chacham. What's the rest of the sentence? Shemidot avraot, that his midot are bad. Now, when they say bad midot, they don't talk like today. Politics, stealing, lashonara, cursing, violence. No. Midot avraot, meaning like the student of Rabbi Akiva, the 24,000 of them died. Because they did not respect each other enough. They were not arrogant. They were not cursing. They were not throwing chairs. They were not sitting in the middle of the street in Yerushalayim. Don't let the, public, the, the traffic go. They didn't do such thing. They were not angry and jealous and fighting with people in the Shonara. They were very righteous people. But between each other, when they were together, I guess, maybe one did not, was not enough sensitive to the others, or maybe did not think about all the, the consequences of what he said. Didn't learn a good kavod ze baze. That's it, and they all died. Why? Somebody in your level should have known better. So that's what they're talking about. Talmid chacham shemidotav raot, meaning a little bit, a little jealousy. Not everything l'shem shamayim. That's called midotav raot. A dead rat in the street is better than him. Shocking. That's one of the most shocking statements in the whole Talmud, in my opinion. Do you understand? Someone in the level of Rabbi Akiva almost, that his midot are not good, not good enough. A dead rat on the street is better than him. Nevela srucha bashuk tova imeno. Do you understand what I'm saying here? I don't say anything. Chazal say. So what do we see from here? What do we see from here? You can know the whole Torah, that means you invested 50 years of your life minimum, and in the end you're still the same rotten person that you came to the world. No, no improvement, nothing whatsoever, no improvement. Rabbi, Let's come. Rabbi, isn't it so that we study Torah, isn't it supposed to improve your leader? Is it consequence of absorbing the learning of Torah? It's supposed to improve your midot if you want to change. If you want. If you don't want to change, you won't improve anything. Some people, you know why they learn Torah? They want to get a good shidduch. They don't care about their situation. I, actually, I just read it here. That a person, either he doesn't know that he has bad midot, that's why now he's not trying to fix it. If somebody does not understand that he's a jealous person, they think it's normal, nothing is wrong with me. If somebody does not understand he's an angry wolf, it's normal. It's, I don't see anything, any problem by me. I'm very good. Once in a while I get angry. What's the big deal? If somebody doesn't understand that he's stingy, because once in a while he gives tzedakah, so he thinks he's generous, but in the eyes of Hashem he's very stingy. If he doesn't understand that, how exactly is he going to fix it? You tell me. Can you fix something you're not even aware it's negative? If you, if you have a problem in your car and you're not aware of it, you're going to know to go to the mechanic, you hear noise. You think it's normal noise of the car until the, the tire breaks. What caused it? Ignorance. You didn't know there's a problem. Now, 
התבונן, pay attention, כי האדם ברוב מידותיו זו משונה מזו. All the traits of a person, one is different than the other. בכל מידה ומידה טורפת דעת האדם. Every bad traits can kill a person, can kill his mind. חז"ל already told us, הקנאה, התאווה והכבוד מוציאים את האדם מן העולם. Jealousy, desires, An honor, searching for honor, can destroy a person, take him completely out of the world. Jealousy, competition with the whole world, psh, collapse. Ra searching for honor, every person did not give him enough respect, he wants to kill him right away. The, the whole world hates him. Why? He wants to force people to bow down to him, like Haman. It's going to end very bad. Desires, destroy us. Some people, extra heavy. Some people, after money. Because of that, they don't learn, they don't do mitzvot. They run in the middle of davening. Money, money, money. They're not honest. Money is their God. Some people, women. Women, 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 they took him away from Hashem. Even King Solomon, believe it or not, shocking. Righteous, smart, genius, rich, son of David Amelech, Mashiach come from him, not from the other children of David, from Shlomo. We should really actually say Mashiach ben Shlomo, not Mashiach ben David. It's also ben David, of course, but it's more dedicated to Shlomo. He doesn't come from other children of David. And what does it say in the Tanakh in the end of the life of Shlomo? What's the final verse that concludes the life of this amazing human being, King Solomon? The women turned his heart away from Hashem. Can you believe such thing? In a Tanakh. It's written in a Tanakh. Imagine what an embarrassment. Imagine you gave all your life to Hashem. You were Gdol Ador. Now they write a biography about your life. And in the last page of the biography... They say, after all the greatness of this rabbi, you should know the women took his heart away from Hashem. Anyone will dare to publish this book? Yes. Huh? If somebody would publish this book, they'll put him in harem for seven years. You embarrass this rabbi. You're a disgrace. How did you, not dare, how did you dare to, to publish such a thing? Why I did not cut that out of the book? What do you want from me? I'm only the printer. Go to the author that wrote it. Now you come to the person that wrote it. What do you want from me? That's what God told me to write. I didn't write it on my own. Meaning Hashem, it's in the Tanakh. Got the approval of Hashem. Why? We, we, we don't reach one millionth of the level of King Solomon. One millionth. We don't reach. Well, it's not an exaggeration. I want to ask you a question. If we would get a note falling from heaven now, you sit in the deck of your house, and you see a big note coming like this, falling right on your desk. And you open it up. Dear Moshe, I am your God, the God of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. I'm disgusted from your actions. That's it. What would happen to us? Do you think you'll be able not to explode with tears and crying and bang your head into the table and right away get such fear in your heart that you want to faint? Right or wrong? If it doesn't bother you, that's it. You're not a human being anymore. You're a rock. You still have a heart. And no, no, no airplane. Don't worry. No airplane passed by. You see a note coming like this, falling on your desk. Dear Moshe, directly to your address. I am your God. I'm disgusted from your action. Or oh, shame on you. Or oh, when are you going to wake up finally? Or oh, why are you so proud? Or oh, why are you so angry? Or oh, why are you so lazy? Or oh, why you don't learn Torah? Why you don't love me? Why you don't follow me? Why are you not religious? Any of those sentences. It will be like a knife into the heart directly. If you still have a heart. 
Do you know what's written about King Solomon? Most people don't pay attention to it. I don't hear that other speaker speaks about it. In the end of his life, the women that he wanted to teach Torah and to send them, he did it for the sake of heaven, to send the, the glory of God all over the world. Today he wouldn't need it. He would open a Facebook page. <laughs> and they go all over the world, that's it. He wouldn't need the hassle. He wouldn't need the hassle. But then he wanted to teach her this one God, the principle of Judaism, and send her away. She went back to her father. She started to teach what she learned from King Solomon. It's amazing. Adam b'shashen olad, a person in the minute that he was born, who begufo bechokmato chalash mishar kol abriot. When a baby is born, is he stronger than the average public or weaker? Very weak compared to older people. Ki chol abriot beyom ivaldam em olchim vochlim um saimim laatzmam. All the all the world they all take care of themselves. They walk, they eat, they can prepare for themselves, cook, and they're independent. Aval adam tzarich torach gadol begufo, vegam ken tzarich yoter tikun le nishmato le taken a chokma u lavin a drachim a tovot. But a human being. He has to try very hard, very f- put a lot of physical effort to fix his soul, to improve his wisdom, and to understand the right path. When you are a baby, you are an animal. Monkey. A little baby monkey was born, jumping on a tree, jumping to the water. What the baby does? Whatever he see, jump, run from here, climb on a couch, falling on his head, flipping over the fruits. He doesn't understand any. The, you put diamonds over there, he's going to throw them from the window. He doesn't understand. Ben Ishchai say, up to what age you are considered a monkey? Who knows? Six. Six years old. Up to six, whatever he does, it's like a monkey ran from the safari and did it. Why are you getting angry? From then on, he begins to understand what's going on. So it says like this, Adam b'tchilato b'lo melamed, since he doesn't have a teacher yet, noheg ka behema, behave like an animal. Like an animal. Ach libo dome leluach, his heart is like a board. Like the board in a class. Now you have to write on a board. If you put the board in the hand of a stupid person, what's going to be on the board? You get the point, no? Who knows what's going to be there? Only nonsense. He will write all kinds of nonsense on it until it would ruin the board and it will not be useful anymore. But the wise person will use the board correctly and will write only very important wise things and in organization. And from the board, he will be able to function and to get a lot of, a lot of advice and good information that will be useful for him for, to conduct his life. This is, the, this is how the heart of the human being is. It's like a board. Whatever info you get in, that's what's going to be observed. Aksilim yetzairu bo tziurei hevel v'sheker. The fools would only push into the heart illusions. Illusions. And all kinds of nonsense. The wise people, the wise people, they will only bring good things inside into the heart and will definitely not fill it up with illusion. King Solomon wrote, How do you recognize a teenager that's growing up? Based on his actions. If all days in the neighborhood playing soccer, Rav Ovadia is not, is not going to be. If all days in the Gemara, nothing else, 
There's a chance one day he'll be. You see by the children. There are kids, yes, school. There's, there is school. There's no school. Break, summer, Passover break, summer break. You ask him, Yaakov, you want to go to camp? No. Uh, what are you going to do in, a, in now in a three weeks of Ben Azmani of Pesach? What am I doing? I'm always doing the same thing. He gets up in the morning, shachrit. He comes back home, 11 at night. What is it all day? All the kids playing, basketball, running, take me here, take me to Macy's, take me to buy hot dogs, take me to 7-Eleven to buy slush. And where is he? All day in a Gemara, in a Bet Midrash. You don't need to ever ask your wife, where is he? What are you asking? You know where he is. Fantastic. Then you know there's a chance one day there's going to be somebody B. But the other son, where is he? Sleeping. Two hours later, where is he? Sleeping. Two hours later, sleeping. Two hours later, where is he? Maybe he's on his, on his computer. Two hours later, where is he? On his computer. Two hours later, he's in the shower. Two hours later, where is he? Went to sleep. He got tired from the four hours computer. Like this. <laughs> you understand the point or no? So here it is. What else? What else? It's like this. Kol midot ha'adam asher tirei bo b'yimei ha'bacharut v'aziknut em ayu b'yimei ha'yaldut. When you see a person is 25, he's angry now, it started in a young age. He's stingy now, it started in a young age. When he's going to be 80, he's stingy. It started when he was four, three, two. It didn't start now at 80. It didn't become stingy age 50. He had it from a childhood. He's insecure. It started when he was four. Now you see it when he's 24. But it started when he was a kid. This is the midot of a person. You design them in a young age. What else? Now, Baruch Hashem, we are finishing the introduction. We would like to inform the roots of the Midot Ve'anfeem and the branches. You have, you know, in a tree, tree, it's an example how the life is. Like you have the tree of life. Tree, it's a very clever thing. It has a root, which is the most important thing. If the roots are good and wide and strong, the tree is not shaky. Now one day left, one day right. It's not growing crooked. It's very solid. It can handle the storms. The same exact thing a human being. If your legs are stable, meaning spiritually, you stand on both legs, you're realistic, you don't live in illusion, you don't fly one day like this with the wind and one day to the other side of the wind, then you have a chance to be somebody big one day. But if the roots are not good, everybody understands this tree will not last. All right. Then after the tree, you have the main, uh, what do you call it? Stem? Stem? Stem. The thicker it is, the more it can handle and the more it can carry and the less it would move, right? And then you cannot influence it anymore. That's it. It's already thick. Once it's skinny, you can still play with that. It's easy to move it. You, you tie a rope, you pull it a little bit for a week. It goes to the other side. You can still play with that. Once it's solid, that's it. Then you have the branches. They begin to spread. They spread. And then you have the leaves and the fruits. This is mamash how the person is developed. So it says like this. Now we're going to teach the roots of the midot. And the branches. Branches is include the stem also. The positive and the negative. And we want to save 
the nature of the human being from the foolishness, from the nonsense, and push him to love ethic, to love Musar. If you're a person that loves Musar, you're very lucky. I meet all the time. Some people love Musar. Some people do not love Musar. I find some people that I started with when they were not religious, and today they're very religious. After they heard everything I have to say, they want to experience other speakers. I already know, before they begin to listen to other speakers, which speakers they like and which speaker they won't be able to hear for even one hour. For me, it's very clear. And it's always like this. I say, they tell me, Rabbi, give me a list of, uh, of uh, speakers that you think I should listen to, English or Hebrew. I tell them, this one is a good option for you. This, 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 this. Why only those ones? What about this one? Not for you. What about this one? Not for you. Those are the good ones for you. So sometimes he try out of curiosity the other one to see why it's not for him. And now I cannot hear it. I, I like, uh, in Israel they have a word for it. I love bombs to the face. So you have, in Israel, you have few speakers like this. Rav Mutsafi, Rav Daniel Zer, Rav Shaulov. Remember him? He came here to speak in Russian. And the biggest mafzitz is Rav Baghdadi. He's young, genius. I am a puppet compared to him. <laughs> compared to him, I'm liberal. <laughs> Hebrew. It's one and a half hours, massive screams. Computer head. He can give you a hundred sources in one lecture by heart. His head is like a computer. And he's a machine gun. Remember the lecture I said to you that I gave yesterday in Canada that only 5% of the people can listen to it? That's similar to his style, without the screaming. So by him, maximum he can reach 5% of the community. Maximum, to begin with. There's no chance to even deal with the others. They won't be able to hear it. They're going to go crazy. They're so liberal and so fake and so living in the darkness that when they hear the way he talks, they're going to run away from fear. They're not, they're not going to even want to try to listen to more. Why? He doesn't move an inch left and right. He didn't even understand that such thing being politically correct. Machine gun. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah, Much like this. But those who listen to him, it will be very difficult for them to hear another speaker. Those who love this style, that's it. They cannot hear anyone. Even Gdole Ador, they won't be able to hear them. Why? Their Neshama wants bombs. I don't want to waste a minute. Just tell me what needs to be done. Show me. Talk to me. Speak strong to me. It's a wake-up call every day. But there is also danger here. What's the danger? If, God forbid, one day you get used to it and it stops to affect you, you're done. Because there's no one in the world that will be able to do a better job. If you came to the greatest doctor in the world, greatest surgeon in this field, and he was able to help you X amount of time, and that's it. That's it. You have no hope. If you deal with the average doctor, there's always a hope I'm going to go to the specialist. Specialist to the best in the world. I still have some other doctors to experience. I went to the best one in the world and he told me no solution. I'm done. If you hear a bummer like this, a bummer, mafzitz, like this, and it doesn't affect you, nothing will affect you. That's, that's very scary. If you know this one won't help you, that's it. For me, it's very clear. If a Jew watch my film, Torah and Science, and after that, he still said, I don't believe in God. There's no point of wasting a minute on him again. That's it. It's a done deal. Cannot be. Faker to such level, there's nothing can be done. It's very rare that it will happen, but sometimes even a person would say, well, I watched it, but I'm still not convinced. How can it be? How many more proofs do you, you need to see in your own eyes that the Torah could never be written by a person? 100% divine. One proof, two, three, ten, twenty, thirty, come on. 
How many witnesses you need to convict a person in murder? One person came to court, I was there, I saw him pulling a gun, shooting twice, right here to the head, over there, in that street, under the tree, 2 a.m. Another witness, the same story. Another one, another one, another one, another one. 30, the same story, word by word. And they all come from one Chinese, one Persian, one Arab, one Israeli, one British. Everybody that was there, one after the other. No conspiracy. How many more witnesses you need? If after 30, the person will say, I'm still in doubt if this is the murderer. No. You know where he belongs. There's a long line there, waiting. Right or wrong? Excuses. Why are you wasting time on him? It's all excuses. So we finished the introduction. Now, let's get into the first chapter. How many chapters you have in this book? Who knows? 28 chapters. Each chapter is another trait, another midah of the human being. Why 28? One option, that's what it came down to. Second option, it was planned. 28 is gematria koach, strength. What's the strength of the human being? In a Kaddish, when we answer Amen, Yesh Merabah, Mevarach, according to Kabbalah, we have to say all the way until the words, the Amiran de Alma. Why? Because it's 28 words, the Ben Ishchai says, based on Ari. 28, Gimatria Koach. Some people only say until it Barach. Some only say, some people only say, Amen, Yesh Merabah, Mevarach. That's it. Some people say, Mevarach, La'alam, La'almei, Almayai, Dvarach. That's when they start. And some people continue until the Amiran Be'alma. It's all different minhagim. Everyone follow his rabbis. But the idea of 28, that it's Koach. Also, 28 is Yadid. You want to be a friend to Hashem? You want Hashem to love you? You need, how do you create friendship? Connection, hand with hand. You take your hand, hand, yad, in Hebrew it's 14. Yud, it's 10, dalet is 4. One yad goes into another yad, 14 and 14, 28. Koach, strength. Two people together, they're much stronger than one. But if a person had double strength than another person, Ruven has 100 kilogram power to push, and Shimon has 50, right? So Reuven has double strength. Two people like Shimon, 50 and 50, will be greater than Reuven with 100. Same thing, straws. We take straw, right? Go to the pizza shop, take a bunch of straws. When you take one, you can break it with two fingers, right? You can fold it. If you take 50, 50 combined, you cannot fold it. It's such a soft thing. You cannot fold it. They combine. They become a stem. This is the idea here. The idea here that unity, unity always makes strength. You want to be united with Hashem. You want to be Yadid. You want to be Yad and Yad, shaking the end of Hashem. You got to work on your Midot. That's the Koach. Shar Arishon Nedaber al Midat HaGa'ava. In case you didn't know, from all the negative traits of the human being, Gava is the worst. Remember, somebody asked you, you have to choose one Midah to get rid of. From all the bad Midot you have, the first one you will choose is Gava, pride. You want to get rid of it. Rambam says, in all the traits, a person has to be in an average way. Not too much to that one side or too much to the other side. This midah, gava, you're not allowed even to have 1% of it. You have to go all the way to the extreme side, to the, to the humble side, to humility. It's so bad 
that even a little bit of that is not permitted. Let me read to you what it says. Shari Shon Nedaber al Midat Agaava Umatov Shen is Dament Chila Lekol Asharim. We're going to talk about pride, and it's great that this is the first thing we're going to start with. Because an obligation of a person to stay away from it, it's so great, it's the opening to many bad things that can come to the human being. Many. We did not find a bad midah more than pride. How much Hashem cannot stand proud people? You have no idea. If you only knew 1% how much Hashem despite proud people, you will never dare to have pride even once in your life. Not to God forbid fall into that category of the people that Hashem despite. You don't want to be despicable. Any eyes of Hashem. Now, in case you think I exaggerate, wait five minutes because I'm going to read to you the sources. You can go and check. Ki petach leraot rabot. Velachen tsarich adam leitchakem. Person has to be wise. Ulaniga ela minaga raui. Push the gaava to the right track. Push it away. Completely. Agava, the pride, is the stamp that the king put an X on it completely and warned us in the Torah, like it says in Deuteronomy 8, verse 11, Yishamer lecha, be careful, pen tishkach et Hashem elokecha, that you won't dare to forget your God. Ki agee yishkach et yotzro. Someone that is proud, forget his creator. Forget his creator. Like they say in Israel, Amelafefon kam ala ganan. The cucumber jumped against the gardener. I put you on the ground, I grew you, I gave you water, I took care of you every day, now you're jumping at me? This is an expression. Vayakum amelafefon ala ganan. Like, like, like it says, Banim gidalti veromamti veem pashubi. I raised children, I brought them up, and what did they do in return? Rebelled against me, Hashem Yerachem. Hagei shkach et yotzro. Shenemar, Uvkarcha vetzoncha irbeyun. You're going to have large cattle. וכסף וזהב ירבה לך, lots of gold and money, ורם לבבך, your heart will start rising, ושכחת את השם אלוקיך, and you will forget your God. You become proud, and you forget your God. Many people today, they became very rich. When they were young and poor in a neighborhood in Israel somewhere, they were very religious. They used to come to Minyan. They used to sit with the Mori and learn. They used to be very humble and very good. And one day they decided to come to America. And they made it. And they became very rich. And they bought beautiful homes. Size of a whole city, each home. And they have now servants. And they have employees. And they feel that everyone bowed down to them. And what happened to them? One day a year, they come to see Hashem. When? When? Either Yom Kippur or the outside of their father. That's it. Other than that, they have no connection to Torah anymore. What happened? You're going to think. I'm so great. I'm so talented. I'm a shark. I'm a phenomenal businessman. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest investor. I know the best. No one in the history knew better than me how to make money. Look what an empire I build. And then if someone disrespects him, oy vey. He's lucky he's still alive. You fired! <laughs> Immediately. Why? 
He works here 10 years. He did not bow down to me today. You fired. ואמרת בלבבך כוכי ועוצם ידי עשה לי את החיל הזה, וזכרת את השם אלוקיך, remember your God, כי הוא הנותן לך כוח לעשות חיל. הוא give you the strength to do good and to succeed, everything from השם. You have rich people like this. They say, I, I met few. What do you think is the secret of your success? My secret? If I tell you I barely know how to write my name in English, would you believe me? I made everything wrong and Hashem turned everything to be right. It doesn't take any credit. What do you mean my success? It's all from Hashem. Everything I understood about, I lost. Everything I did wrong, I made. Yes. <laughs> remember I once told you about the story about that Hasid in Monsi, no? Do you know? Remember or no? He got married, 20 years old Hasidish boy, pure, naive, innocent, doesn't know anything about the business world. One shark real estate broker realized he doesn't know anything from his life. He knew he has $27,000 gifts from the wedding. which probably in a year will be gone. How long you can live with this kind of money? He told him, I have a great investment for you. What? You can buy 20-something acre upstate in a mountain. You know how much 27 acre, 28 acre? Look how big is one acre here, multiplied by almost 30. Can I have a huge mountain? It's all yours. It's, the value is going to go up. Look. more and more people expanding. One day it's going to be world fortune. He didn't tell him you need to shave all the trees. You have to make the place straight. You have to make sewer. The city won't do it for you. It's going to cost you millions to get pipes under the ground. It will cost you millions to clean all the rocks and the trees. He didn't tell him all that. So he basically like taking $27,000 and put it on fire. Literally. <laughs> One time a guy told me, what was that, 18 years ago, he said to me, there is a lot here in Far Rockaway on the water. I want to buy it. You want to be my partner? How much? $60,000, the whole lot. You can build two, two families on it. One and another one. I said to him, $60,000, the lot, you're crazy? On the water? Maybe it's $600. No, $60,000. I said to him 10 times, he was a real estate broker, not me. He works for a real estate office. I said to him, it cannot be, there has to be a catch. No? You want me to let you speak to the guy? I said, listen, I trust you, you work in real estate, you're supposed to know what you're doing. Something is fishy here, check again, check again, check again. <laughs> in the end, he said, no, everything is right. I'm going to make millions here. You build, it's like four, four residents on the water, mamash on the water. I said to him, amazing deal. How much we need to put down? 6,000. Let's do it. We, we, we took it. A month went by. Then I said to someone, tell me, you know a lot about business. Can you check for me why this lot cost only 60,000? I'm trying to figure out what's the catch here. I knew that there's a law, if people pass by, you cannot block it anymore. After seven years, it's called easement. That's it, you cannot build. So that's the first thing I told him to check. He said, no easement. You can build. Okay, what, what else can go wrong? There's no lien on the land? No lien. We did the we check. No lien. No tax lien? No. Nobody lien? No, nothing. Oh. No cellular antenna, something, I don't know, subway, train, noise, no. Uh, is it, well, everyone is a fool, all these real estate sharks here, not one of them wanted to buy the land. Too good to be true. <laughs> Who knows what happened? I asked my friend, can you check for me in five minutes? 
He told me, oh, I figure out why it's cheap. There is no sewer. Sewer doesn't go that far. Sewer alone would cost you $200,000 to make. You have to pull it from the city. You have to make pipes under the ground, tunnels. Forget about it. You're not going to have plumbing. No water, no bathroom. Who's going to build a house over there? I said to this fool, hey, you genius. How many times I told you check something like this you don't know? He felt so bad. He said to me, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going to get you out of there. <laughs> An hour later, somebody called me up. I'm going to buy you out. I said, Mama, give me what I pay. I don't want to make a penny. Take it. Baruch Sheptarani. I wonder whatever happened there. It's probably still there vacant. Now I'll teach you another rule that I learned today. Remember I told you when you don't have Torah, the rules that you make sometimes is mamash genius. Genius, very genius. Today I discovered something that may save your life. Did you know, if you see now in, in anywhere a store for rent, you want to open a business, restaurant, shoe store, bookstore, any kind of store. You come to the landlord, you come to an agreement how, to give you a list, how much the rent, you sign a list, you pay him a few months up front, and you get the store. So now you have a list. You invest two, three hundred thousand dollars in a business, you make it nice, decoration, I don't know, if it's a restaurant, you put ovens, you put all the equipment, marble, everything, tables, chairs. After that, you begin to work. One day, Mr. William shows up. Yes, can I help you? Yes. I am from the Department of Sales Tax. Okay? According to our record, you owe us one and a half million dollars. Me? I never had a business. What do I owe you? I'm only here three weeks. Every penny I, I paid you. Sales tax, eight and a half percent on all the sales. Well, you took over the business from Mr. This. It's not you? No. So you owe now the money, not him. You bought the debt. You say, I'm sorry, I opened a new corporation. I'm not a fool. I know when you buy a corporation from someone, you buy all the negative with the positive. I'm not a fool. I'm a new business. He was a pizza store and I'm a bookstore. I never saw the guy in my life. He vacant the place and only a year later I came and rented it from the landlord. We don't care. You owe us one and a half million dollars. And we're coming after you worse than Italian mafia. They, you cannot get away from it. With tax and penalty, you're done. Take away your home. Even if you prove in court, the court of Sodom and Gomorrah, that you don't even know, have no idea who was here 10 years ago in this business. What does it have to be my responsibility? You owe them the money. Do you know that? I'm still cannot digesting it. I discovered it a few hours ago. Who knew about it? I asked the guy ten times. Ten times. Landlord. I asked him, wait a minute. If the guy closed the business, that's it. No business. The store is empty a year. And you came to the landlord and took it. You don't even know the old guy. And you opened a new, brand new corporation. And from day one, you paid everything. They still come to you after someone was there a few years ago? He said, absolutely. I asked my lawyer and I asked another lawyer. I said to him, the law is supposed to protect the citizen, not to murder them. What kind of a stupid law is this? There's nothing you can do about it. Can you believe such thing? Who would ever believe such thing? And I said to me, go and Google, check. One person bought a business, opened a new corporation. They made him now in court pay half a million dollars from someone else, money that he did not pay. Can you believe something like that? I asked 10 times. That's why I feel free to tell it to you, because I ask again and again and again, and then I ask another person. Yes, that's the law here. 
That's the lawyer. Everywhere. No, when the Hasidic guy. <laughs> okay, we're in the middle of the third story. <laughs> Hard to believe. Hard to believe such thing. Did you know if you buy a house that was rent control, rooming house, let's say 10 people divided the house to rooms and they all live and pay rent to the landlord, to the landlord and it's rent control, rent control area, meaning you cannot charge the landlord more than X amount of money, and he charge regular prices. The people didn't know it's rent control. They paid him full price. And you buy that place, you buy it on your own. You bought, you pay full price for the house. And one of these tenants go to the city to complain that he just found out that he paid full rent when it was under the laws of rent control, you have to pay all the years that the tenants paid to the old landlord that could be died in the meantime, all the money he collected from the tenants double penalty for all the years. It can be millions of dollars. It goes to your responsibility. That's the laws. How to believe how we live in such a world when you don't have Torah, who knows what next? So the guy, the Hasid in Monsi, he thought, maybe I have a chance to get rich. He bought, he bought the lot. Then people told him, Mishugine, you burned your money. The money is gone. It gadol with kadosh meirabu. Finished. The poor Hasid went back to the Gemara with tears. What can he do? But Hashem is great. <laughs> there is a pasuk. My uh, day of crying turned into a party. That's what David Amelech wrote. Hashem turned his hesped, eulogy, into a great celebration. And one day somebody calls him up or knock on his door. Hey, Mendel, who's Marse? All is good. He said to him, are you the landlord of the property over there in the mountains? Yo, yo. He said, we need to talk. What? Do you know camp such and such? Camp? No. Okay, they are camping right next to your property. And this year they have a lot more children that come and they don't have room. So they need to buy your property. Are you interested to sell? In the middle of nowhere, all jungles over there. You interested to sell? Sure, but this time Mendel learned his lesson. This time he took a shark lawyer to represent him. Three or something million dollars he got for it, all the lot. And he, he did become rich in the end. Baruch Hashem. Happy end to the story. Happy end. Happy end. Now let's see what the Torah says about proud people. King is allowed to be proud. King. It says about the king, King is not allowed to feel greater than his brothers. King. You're nothing special. They have to respect you, yes. If they rebel against you, it's that penalty. But you have to feel it's nothing special. If the Torah warn a king, needless to say, ordinary people, needless to say, time ran out. Next week, Bezrat Hashem, 